Hello, my name is Dallas Dalton Fennell, and this is my final presentation for my world literature class. And my presentation is over An American Tragedy by Theodore Dreiser. So to begin, let's talk a little bit about the author for a minute. So Theodore Dreiser was born August 27th, 1871. And he died December 28th, 1945, uh, 74 years old. His best known works were An American Tragedy and his first book, Sister Carrie. An interesting fact that I found about him was that he was actually supposed to be on the Titanic, but he didn't. Uh, his English publisher told him to go on a cheaper one, and since it was Titanic's first voyage, he thought it would be better to take one that was uh, already done its voyage before, which was the Croonland. And I just think that's so weird that this guy was supposed to be on the Titanic and he missed out on it, which dodged a bullet, you know what I mean? So let's talk about the sto main story itself what an American tragedy is all about. The main story follows Clyde Griffiths, and he grows up in a very strict religious household, son to two missionary Christians, and the eldest son out of three other siblings. Clyde does not like to live like this. He hates being poor, begging on the street with the rest of his family, singing, uh, church hymns and things like that and he just wants more out of life he wants to follow this dream uh the american dream as Dr theodore dreiser puts it uh he wants to dream of being rich and having access to the finest luxuries living and dating people of high status and clyde really 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 wants this more than anything so later on, Clyde becomes a bellboy for a hotel. He starts getting money, he starts spoiling himself, getting fancy clothes and things like that, starts having friends, and this is where he starts getting into uh, non-Christian religious uh, hedonistic ideals. Uh, he starts drinking alcohol with his friends, getting involved with prostitutes. He's only 15 too, so... And it's, it starts to cement a more selfish and refined side closer to his actual lifestyle. He does, however, in the story, he basically what modern people would call a simp. <laughs> simp is modern slang for someone who goes too far and too much for someone they like and get little to no return for it. And since he has such strong and sexual desires, he was able to, he wants to simp, so to speak, for a girl known as Hortense. And she's known in town as the girl who flirts with all the guys just so they can buy her stuff. And she doesn't give them anything in return. Clyde doesn't care, though. He just wants to date her anyways. Clyde goes very far just to be acknowledged by Hortense. He, does, he goes so far as to pay, make a payment, a starting payment, for a fur coat she wanted instead of helping his sister, who just returned after running away with a lover years ago and returning home pregnant, alone, and uh, poor. He decides to help Hortense instead of helping his own family for his own selfish needs. This continues on in the story. It remains like this with Clyde and Hortense and this type of lifestyle working for the hotel until they go for a joyride at night. When they do, they accidentally drive over and kill a little girl. Now they're just all worried and scared and they all just, they just bolt throughout the darkness until they hit a tree. Clyde, Hortense, and the rest of the passengers escape and scatter while the driver and his girlfriend are stuck to take the the fall not on purpose though 
So after this, Clyde hides after all this. He's, he waits until the heat dies down. No one knows who he is. No one cares anymore. He gets another job as a lobby boy for a hotel far away. And this is where he meets his estranged uncle, someone his father hasn't seen in 30 years. And he's very successful, very rich, and he owns a shirt-making company in New York. Clyde begs him for a job, and his uh, uncle, Samuel, agrees. He starts working at the very low level of the chain in the factory, working on how the fibers are made into the shirts. And this is where he starts to return to his sexual urges. After he gets promoted to manager of this, of a factory wing with only women, the girls start ogling him, giving Clyde a sense of superiority. Back when he was dating Hortense, he felt small and insignificant. Now, here, he catches everyone's eye. Every girl wants him, because he looks sharp, he's handsome, and he starts like, why shouldn't I date one of these girls? That's what he's thinking in his head. He doesn't actually date any of them, except when one girl shows up, a girl named Roberta. They begin a love affair, dating in secret, as to not lose each other's jobs, because the Griffiths said if Clyde dates any co-workers, he's fired, he's kicked out. But if he should date anyone at all, it should be someone with high status, because during this era, uh, people with high status dated and married other people of high status to get more, so on and so forth. So things remain this way, uh, Clyde being romantic with Roberta in this sexual relationship, until Clyde catches the fancy for another girl named Sandra. Sandra is rich, high status, Someone that Griffiths really wouldn't mind if he actually started dating. With this new love affair that he wants to spark with Sandra, he starts to ne neglect Roberta. Sort of reversing the roles uh, from his original relationship with Hortense. Clyde doesn't care anymore about her feelings. He just stays there because he feels like he needs to. And Roberta is just head over heels for him. She's willing to do whatever it takes to keep him as hers. And Sandra only wants him because of his high status with the Griffiths. And Clyde only wants to date her, Sandra, because she's rich and they hang out with her rich and fancy friends. So because of all this, the relationship between Clyde and Roberta sours. Clyde wants to break up with Roberta, Roberta until she reveals that she's pregnant. And Clyde, not wanting to, to ruin his status and get, you know, kicked out of his job, he, he, he gets Roberta to taking medicine to abort it. It doesn't work. Tries to find an abortionist, but he can't find one. So now he's stuck with this. Roberta kind of accepts it. She's like, I guess we're going to have this kid and everything. You'll be there, right? Talking to Clyde. And Clyde, not wanting this relationship, wants out of it. So Clyde has an idea. He thinks if he kills Roberta, make it look like an accident, Roberta's gone, he's clean, and he gets to date Sandra. So Clyde takes Roberta out on a boat ride, just the two of them. His plan is to strike her with an oar in the head. She falls in the water face down and drowns. Except instead, Roberta accidentally topples the boat trying to fetch her camera to take a picture of the beautiful scenery. The boat topples over. Clyde survives. But Roberta is dead. So an actual accident happened. But there's enough evidence to convey to convey Clyde's original's intentions. He tries to escape the police as quickly as possible from catching him, but they do. 
and he's put on trial. His family disowns him. The crowd hates him. Roberta's family despises him. And the trial, he's tried for murder of the first degree for Roberta and his unborn child and is sentenced to death. At the end, Clyde is put in the electric chair and shocked to death. So for such a depressing story, really, what's the message is trying to send? The message Dreiser is trying to deliver to the audience uh, was an important message at this time where the American dream was believed to be more of a Cinderella story. You marry someone of high status, you get power and control and high status as well. You get your things handed to you. Dreiser saw this formula in a lot of light novels at the time, and he turned it on its head. He despised this idea because it wasn't real. It's not how real life works. Not for hardworking people or realistic people. So that's why Dreiser made this. And that's why it's called An American Tragedy. It's a parody, sort of, but also a message over the American dream. So throughout the novel, Clyde has this dream of living luxury and fame and high status, which is what the dream is, the American dream. And he wants to be someone important and not looked down upon. He's willing to go so far for this, he does so many things wrong. He spends money on a girl who doesn't love him instead of helping his family. He neglects his morals for his own selfish sexual desires and fun. And he neglects his own current romantic relationship for someone who likes him for his social financial status only instead of someone who genuinely loves him. So what are my thoughts on this story? Despite the fact that the story is depressing, it's still pretty relevant with issues we see in today's society. There's people who will only date and marry or even acknowledge you only if you have status instead of just you as the individual. Which sucks, but it's a very harsh reality that does happen. During the beginning of my uh, reading this, you feel bad for Clyde. You have to, because he's the protagonist. And you want to enjoy him and you like him. You do. You like him at the beginning of the story. But as it progresses, you just start to hate him. You just hate him for all the things he's doing. All the selfish, mean, cruel things he does solely for himself. And these materialistic ideals he so desires. And another thing I actually begin to notice with Clyde is that he follows a same formula that her that his sister's husband follows. Remember at the beginning I said, or one of the slides I said, that Clyde's sister runs away with a boy because she fell in love with him. Years later she returns, pregnant and alone. Clyde follows a very same similar formula for his relationship with Roberta. He falls in love with a girl, he tells her that he loves her. They have sex, and they have a child. Clyde is not ready for adulthood, and he cuts ties with her. But in a more lethal sense, but the, the similarities are very obvious. It almost works like an omen to what's about to happen in Clyde's life. Maybe if he made a different decision, maybe he, if he chose to actually help his sister with the money problems, instead of keeping it for himself to give to Hortense, he could have learned a better lesson. He could have become a better person, but he just doesn't. Continuing my uh, last slide, Clyde, uh, in his first romantic relationship, he's over the moon for Hortense, the very first love he's actually had, love, 
but she doesn't really love him. She only uses him so she can get things. And when all this happens after uh, the car accident and everything, Hortense goes on, dates another guy with the coat Clyde put the first purchase on, which just destroys him, really. And Clyde sort of reverses the roles for himself in a way that is similar to Hortense. Every girl that he's working with ogles at him. He's handsome. He's very cool looking, you know? But he doesn't go after any of them until Roberta. And that's when the relationship truly follows the reverse. She's willing to... She was willing to go any lengths just to keep him. And he only cares if he could ease his sexual urges. He just wanted to fall in love with someone and sleep with them, really. And as soon as Sandra revealed herself, Clyde was crazy about her and completely forgot and did not even remotely care about Roberta. So Clyde falls into the spectrum of a simp and basically a misogynist not caring about anyone else's feelings but his own so long as he alone is satisfied. Or until the girl he obsesses over finally acknowledges and is wooed over. And until then it just repeats the process. So, like I said earlier, this was very relevant in the 1920s because during this time, and still kind of during this time, uh, people, everyone cared about status. You married someone with a lot of money and power, and someone else dates another person with money and power, it increases both statuses. It was just common practice back then. Marry someone who makes a lot of money and you'll be set for life. People during this time were just too vain and greedy. Not to mention hypocritical to what the whole point of marriage and everything was about. Because the, um, after all, basically very few were out of love and more out of financial status and gain. Many of them had affairs and went to brothels, things like that. They, had, they were not true to their marriages. You feel bad and almost sick as the story goes on, not only because the harsh reality of the book enraptures about how corporate and capitalistic ideals for fame, wealth, being more important than anything else, and the, pro and the progression of the protagonist being more and more unfavorable, unfavorable as the story continues. Now, to end this uh, presentation, what are my final thoughts on it? Personally, I enjoyed the book. Despite all the negative things it covers, I enjoyed the book due to its change in pace comparatively to my recent readings. Albeit, though, the book is sort of boring for the first and near final section, mainly because the first was trying to get us attached to Clyde and how his story started, because at the end of the novel, it just rambles on over the court case for like 100 pages that doesn't change anything he's still the the jury has already made their verdict he's going to die it just it doesn't really matter and if i'm being honest i would read it again if i had more time for such a very thick and detailed book it is very thick i have it right here right here i do not have the time nor patience for it <laughs> Not for, not again. Sorry. Uh, so, my personal rating for this, 12 out of 15. The rest of this will be my works cited. Works cited 1. And here it is. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you have a good day. Thank you for watching.